have 12 draft picks coming up. Which way will the Raiders go? We've got big holes to fill. This is Dave Ziegler's job. I mean, Dave has got to find those guys. Do they want to go to that quarterback route now? But they got some different avenues as far as how they can approach this. Welcome to Kansas City and the 2023 NFL Draft. Ready to hit somebody. Go! There it is. First down, clock's running! Coming off OTAs, getting you ready for what the future of this offseason looks like, and we'll get you ready for the start of the upcoming season for the Silver and Black. It's a long process, it's a tedious process. You know, we felt very prepared for the test. As the 2023 NFL Draft approaches, preparations at Raiders headquarters is underway. This year, the Raiders have the seventh pick in the first round. This is the first first round pick under the McDaniels and Ziegler regime. You know, when, when you have a franchise that maybe hasn't had the consistent success that you would want, um, you look at some other teams in the division, there is no cheat code, there's no magic pill to take to get to that level. You have multiple first round picks in a single year, which the Raiders have had multiple times in the last few years. And those players don't pan out for whatever reason, whether it's off the field stuff, on the field, injuries, you know, it really doesn't matter what it is. But when you consistently miss on that, it's going to take its toll on your roster. And you see that lack of depth start to come through. And the only way to make your roster sustainable and to have year over year success is to draft well. And so if you don't have that, you know, it's just really impossible. And so that, that homegrown talent that he's referring to, you know, that's what it is. When I talk about building for the future is when you look at the construction of this team, this is just the reality of it, is we have one of the lowest percentages of homegrown talent in the league. You build a consistent winner at the end of the day by um, drafting and developing players and developing your own core. That's something that's going to develop over the course of time. And so there, there's a natural pressure there, but I think with where they're at, you know, they, in, in having that vision of wanting to have homegrown talent and that be their way of building, if you know, if you're not going to go make those big moves in free agency, if you're not going to swing those big trades, but well, you can't miss on the draft picks too. Is there an inherent pressure? Do you feel pressure to get it right? Yes. I want to get 12, I want to get 12, 12 contributing players, you know? And so, um, yeah, we put that pressure on, on ourselves and I put that pressure on, on myself and Josh puts the pressure on himself. And I think that pressure, that motivation to get it right, that motivation to improve the team, though that's the pressure that, that keeps us, um, you know, keeps us pushing and keeps us focused and dialed in. For the Las Vegas Raiders scouting department, the road to the draft requires a year-round search to find the best young talent in football. The evaluation process leading up to the draft for our college scouts and our guys that are on the ground floor, which were our area scouts, it starts in May. So our guys start to, um, through our spring scouting process, they start to identify and evaluate some of the top prospects for the next draft. So those guys started as soon as the draft was over last year, they started working on the 2023 draft. And then the fall process, that's where everybody is kind of, you know, jumping in. And what I mean by that, the area scouts are now, you know, making their school calls, getting the character and the background information, evaluating the process, attending games. Each one of our prospects that are on the draft board have about four or five different evaluations, you know, the different people that, that have seen them. So that's kind of the, in a nutshell, the process in the fall, and then we're graduating into the All-Star Games. For the first time, we get to sit down individually with these players and interview them and start to learn a little bit more from the first-hand perspective of what makes them tick, what makes them who they are. You know, there's consistent evaluation, you know, continuing to go on. At the 2023 Senior Bowl, defensive coordinator Patrick Graham served as national team head coach. This opportunity gave the Raiders early insight into the young talent ahead of the NFL draft. Hey, it's all man to man down here, okay? So red area, like I told you, red area, two minute, third down, this is where you make your money, all right? Yeah. So when they're gonna be fighting to get the ball out because it's all tight contested throws, catch it and pull it away from the defenders. 
It definitely gave us a head start, especially me as a coach. But through the guidance from both Dave, Champ, and Brandon, those guys gave us a lot of information heading into the Senior Bowl in terms of players to you know spend extra time with and talk to. And then once we got down there, you're able to be hands-on, see how they handle corrections right away, spend some time in the you know meeting room, also in the meal room and out there on the field. So I think that stuff was invaluable in terms of being able to get to know the players. You know, it was only a week, but you saw the work ethic there, um, the ability to handle the scheme, and then just how they worked from you know, day to day, period to period, putting uh, their best out there on the field and really taking pride in it. And that, that was one of the positives. The Senior Bowl, the East-West game, all the different All-Star games are really, really a valuable time for us. And then that leads into the combine, you know, and so then the combine piles on top of that. And then it leads into the, the pro day circuit where, you know, we did some traveling here this year and, you know, hit pro days and we're able to interview players and, you know, see them live again. And then we spend the month of April um, leading up to the draft. There's a, you know, a core group of five or six of us um, that are in the draft room Monday through Saturday watching tape you know, going from prospect to prospect down the board and really setting the board at that point and having a lot of discussions and debates and things like that. It's a long process, it's a tedious process, and we have a lot of people that um, do a lot of good work for us here within the organization that are involved in ultimately getting that draft board set. Tyree Wilson, let's put it up, 23 reps at 225. This guy is six foot six, has a wingspan of 84 inches, and he's like, yeah. I'll still bench, I love that. Bennett. Maryland. Mm. He's going to be a nickel. Mm. That's rolling. He's going to make nickels with a 4 3 1. He's plug and play. This is back to back Maryland corner showing you some big time speed. We really were happy with all the information that our scouts had gathered, all the information we had gathered throughout the whole process. So it was a really satisfying, exciting feeling that we had um, going into the draft, knowing that we had done all the work. And then Josh and I really kind of hone in the last two weeks before the draft and we sit down, we're watching a lot of film together. Um, and, and that was an exciting thing too, because you know a lot of the work that we had done up to that point was separate. And we came together and, and um, not really a, as a surprise, but a lot of our thoughts, a lot of our ideologies, a lot of the things that we looked at when it came to evaluating players were in line once we came together in the group. So that was, you know, there was a lot of excitement around that. The Raiders are, they're in a big spot. What is it, pick seven? They got some options there. You know, what do they want to do? Do they want to go to that quarterback route now? Do they want to, you know, use that number seven pick for an important part of their team that can help them out right away? And they got some different avenues as far as how they can approach this. Uh, be interesting to see. Do you believe that they will draft Eric a quarterback in the first round, number seven? No, I don't think so, Amber. I think this football team right now is really set on trying to build right? Because you have an offense that's stacked with so many outstanding players offensively. And I think Jimmy G is going to do just enough to be able to get this team over the hump. Obviously, you're going to need a younger quarterback sometime in this draft, maybe later on. But the first pick, I think that's going to be someone who's going to make an impact this year for our football team. With the draft quickly approaching, there are other needs on the roster that have to be addressed. I mean, I think the offense was was better than a lot of people thought last year. They were top 12 in, in most metrics that you would look at, but the defense really struggled in all areas. And so improving that defensive line and you know, bulking up the linebacker core, the secondary, I think they need to address all areas. At the combine, Dave Ziegler, I asked him, you know, which what's your philosophy for building your defense, front to back or back to front? I've always been in, in, in a belief when you're talking about the defensive side of the football of, of I'd say building it inside out. I think having a, a strong defensive line sets the tone for the rest of the defense. But I think having a, a deep um, defensive line that can disrupt, you know, that you can um, run in waves and things of that nature. And, you know, we, we have a lot of work to do to get to that point. Um, but if I was going to kind of lean one way, I would say that would be, um, you know, where I would start from a building standpoint. Get your popcorn in Kansas City where they are ready for the 2023 NFL Draft. See, the season of hope starts right now. The path to a Super Bowl starts in the summer. The path to a dynasty 
starts by nailing the NFL draft. And this night, this weekend, is where every single fan base will believe that their team is starting that path to a dynasty. Vegas Raiders is they have 12 draft Ooh. selections. That is tied for the most out of all NFL teams. So they have a lot of draft capital. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Come on, baby. Bring it Let's go. Right now. Raiders. I'd say a quiet confidence, um, uh, a calmness. You know, we felt very prepared for the test. And so a lot of the anxiety and nerves, I, I think are really more, it's really more about excitement and anticipation at that point. A lot of discussion, a lot of collaboration, but also understanding we can control the controllables. So, you know, there's not a lot of emotion and energy getting expelled on things that we can't control. There's gonna be players that are picked, you know, before you pick that you wanted to, um, that maybe you wanted to, to draft. We really just don't let that distract us. We see what it is, we quickly move on and recenter ourselves on what the next, you know, the next strategy is. The 2023 NFL Draft is now officially open. We knew, you know, had a pretty good idea of who the first pick in the draft was gonna be. With the first pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Bryce Young, quarterback, Alabama. And so after that, we, went through all types of plans, you know, best case scenario, kind of middle ground scenario, worst case scenario. And so we were prepared um, while we were at seven. The Houston Texans select CJ Stroud, quarterback, Ohio State, Will Anderson Jr., linebacker, Alabama, Anthony Richardson, quarterback, Florida, the Seattle Seahawks select, Devin Witherspoon, quarterback, the Arizona Cardinals select, Paris Johnson Jr., Ohio State. The one scenario that we looked at were how many quarterbacks were gonna get drafted because we knew um, based on that, we knew there was gonna be a pool of defensive players and, and an offensive player uh, that could be available at seven. You're doing the Charger games, guys. This secondary needs major upgrades. And when you're in a division with these guys in this town right here with Patrick Mahomes, you need some more guys who can cover. The one thing to keep in mind, they swung and missed, remember, for offensive tackle in a couple of drafts ago. They need that right tackle to go with Colton Miller on the left side. Jimmy Grappolo may be their quarterback now. They're going to be angling for one in the future as well, so it's something to keep in mind. Raiders! Tyree, this is Coach McDaniels, how are you? We're gonna turn the pick in here and you're gonna be a Raider. So we just wanted to congratulate you. Uh, you're really gonna help our football team. We're looking forward to uh, integrating you here with our group and couldn't be more excited to, uh, to make you a Raider here, bud. We're excited, man. You know, smart, tough, dependable, and guys that love football. And we're gonna get you better and um, you know, keep growing you. And, and um, it's gonna be a special thing for you. We're really excited for you and your family. Enjoy this moment. Uh, with everybody, you'll see it coming across the screen. We'll see you here uh, sooner and later. With the seventh pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Tyree Wilson, defensive end, Texas Tech. When you look at his tape, he's an explosive guy with a ton of traits that the NFL loves. He's the prototypical defensive end. I love his game. I think he's going to be the best pass rusher in this draft. Raiders may have gotten a guy that they can pair with Max Crosby for years to come in a division where it pays to get after the quarterback, and now they have a better defense moving forward in the 20 Tyree Wilson, let's go. Y'all ain't stopping that, bro. Let's go. Hey, turn me up, Tyree. 
Turn me up, Tyree. Tyree Wilson, let's go. We, you know, definitely followed a passion for football there. Um, and so that was one thing that was exciting. And we, and we, we also identified him just as a, um, a curious learner, someone that wants to learn more about the game, someone, someone that wants to learn more about his position, the techniques of his position and how to play the position. And so those were really attractive things in terms of the makeup. And then the skill set when you watched him on film, he's explosive, an explosive player with a lot of length. And then you combine that with explosive and quick twitch, we can cause a lot of problems. He's a very disruptive player on, on all three downs. We felt like he was one of the most disruptive players in the draft, in the run game, and as a pass rusher. And so those were all the things that ended up making us very attracted to Tyree at that spot. Picks rolling in round one, number seven. Las Vegas Raiders selecting Tyree Wilson, the edge bender. Tyree Wilson, once a red Raider, now painted silver and black. I feel like being a Raider in all three, you know, phases of my life is, is something that God planned. Look who hopped up. Three spots, flipping a fifth round selection to Chris Ballard, general manager of the Indianapolis Colts, to make this selection and immediately toss the pick in. The Las Vegas Raiders. We just traded with Indianapolis, we're on the clock now, and, and you're going to be a Raider. Congratulations and welcome. Here's Dave. Here's Dave. Michael. Yes, sir. Cash. Welcome to Raider Nation. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. We couldn't be more excited than to have you to the team. Congrats, enjoy the moment with your family. Um, we'll have someone in touch with you in terms of uh, some travel and things like that, but enjoy the moment, man, you earned it. Yes, sir, thank you very much, thank you. With the 35th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Michael Mayer, tight end, Notre Dame. Well, Mike was a guy that we had, you know, um, evaluated that we thought he would go in the first round. Um, didn't know exactly where, but you know, felt that that's you know that was that's where he would go. But at the end of the day, uh, we got to the end of the first round, and, and and Michael was still there. And so once we saw a player with the value that we had on him, again the the traits both off the field and then just what his talent was on the field, he was usually one of the best offensive players on the field, no matter what game he was playing in. And so he was one of those you know one of those players that was the best available player at a position that we also had a need on and, and that's where it makes a lot of sense to be aggressive and, and go up and get them and um, we're really happy that we we did and oh what a catch by mayor the ball was on the back with the 70th pick in the 2023 nfl draft the las vegas raiders select byron young defensive tackle alabama trey tucker wide receiver cincinnati Jacorian Bennett, defensive back, Maryland. Aiden O'Connell, quarterback, Purdue. Christopher Smith, defensive back from Georgia. Amari Bernie, linebacker, Florida. Niesta J. Silvera, defensive tackle, Arizona State. You know, to be able to do this, some of the things that we were able to do in this draft, which we were aggressive to move up, was there were ways that we had acquired picks throughout the year. But fans and things of that nature of the game don't understand how maybe a trade in August can affect your um, ability to do some things in the draft all the way in April. There were different moves that we made throughout the year that allowed us to have some extra picks that allowed us to be flexible in the draft. And those are some of the reasons you do those things. Kind of crazy that this is, this is gonna be my home, you know. Uh, first time living living out of Texas, you know. I'm just uh, blessed that you know they chose me and feel like we're the right fit, and I'm excited to you know work with them and you know learn from them also. Welcome to your first day of work, big dog. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Excited for you, man. It's awesome. I'm excited. It's an accomplishment. For sure. It's time to get to work. This is home now.
friend hit somebody. Been waiting for this for three and a half months. Tight ends are ready to play some ball today. Drafting players um, and infusing your, your roster with youth and players that you drafted is really important to that process. Because the guys that we bring in, what they get exposed to and what they learn about the NFL and what they learn about expectations, standards, attention to detail, and those things are gonna be taught by us. When you're bringing a lot of guys in, there's a point where everybody has to be on board. Good, good, Dad. One draft doesn't solve that. We're gonna need multiple drafts and, and multiple successful drafts of us doing our job and really have everybody, I would say, really have a good understanding of, of how we wanna play, how, what our expectations are in terms of preparation, practice, discipline, and all those things. So we've definitely improved that part of the team. Now that all the picks are in and the rookies are in Vegas, it's time to start forming bonds and building camaraderie before the work on the field begins. Uh, we had Top Golf today with the Raiders organization. Uh, player development took some time out to bring us out here, and uh, I'm just having a great time with the guys today, man. Oh, yes, sir. Or. That's in, that's in the green. You know, anytime you can get out with the guys and, um, you know, you see and get to know each other at the facility, but I think it's different when you, you know, get out of the facility a little bit and, um, you know, get to see the guys in their element and hang out a little bit. So um, it's, it's good. It's just to decompress and a uh, good time to relax. Oh! oh. Back on track. Where did they go Back on it, track. TW like Tiger Woods, you know? You're red! Hey, a win is a win. Hey, a win is a win. Oh, let me get one more, let me get one more. That might be it, that might be it. It's all about kind of finding common interests, finding things you want to do together, um, and ultimately, the closer you get, the better you're going to be out on the ball field together. Um, so this is a very cool event to do this, build some um, competitive spirit. We're competing out here, so it's been fun. Raider Nation, what's going on? Sibley Skulls here. We are at the Raiders headquarters. I'm so excited. It's 2023 content day. So we're going behind the scenes, bringing you all the exclusives, coaches, players, everyone. They're all right below. Stay tuned. I'm excited to be a part of this. Excited to, uh, you know, get this summer going, uh, keep getting through OTAs and keep doing our thing. We're, we've been having some good practices, so uh, I'm excited. I appreciate it. How are we feeling? We got new guys coming in. This is always an exciting day because everybody gets to like have fun, talk, and, and see each other in the uniform. So what are your thoughts going into this? Um, you know, they're long days, I'm not gonna lie. You know, you got a lot of responsibilities you gotta get done, but we're having fun with it. Football's getting closer. Put the pads on again. Just a lot of excitement in the building, for sure. So appreciate it. You're looking at me first. Guys, guys, over here. I'm loving it, uh, especially putting it on today. This is the first time in the uniform. Uh, it's special. There's something about the shimmer on the pants or something. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's nice. I like it. Pieces are in place for the Las Vegas Raiders. Building camaraderie, trust, purpose, and creating something special on the field every day. In the desert heat being pushed to the limit, the work never stops. At the helm, Josh McDaniels leads the charge. An offensive authority with his eye on the prize, looking ahead to the 2023 season. You know, we're coming here to work, but we're also finding time to build relationships, build bonds to, you know, when we step on that field, we're ready to go to war for our brothers. We're just gonna keep growing, keep getting better. First down, clock's running! That's better. That's better, honey. 
end of the day, we're just here to win. We're just here to just play ball and, and focus in. Uh, that's just what it comes down to. Keep letting them play! Let them play! Go. There it is. That should be the standard. Hey, I got your help, face. Just try to come in every day just trying to get, trying to get better. Uh, that's all I can do. You know, not worry about the outside noise and what, what people are writing about, what people are saying. So just continue to work and, you know, that's been my mindset since day one. <laughs> Guys, coaches and players, I think we all kind of know how we want to practice and work. We know the value of trying to get every ounce of, you know, um, you know, work done that we're allotted in terms of the time limits that we have. So, you know, our jobs as coaches are to improve the players each day. So we all know what we're trying to build here and the type of success we're looking to, to have and, and hopefully sustain. Ladies, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hey.